Hello, welcome to the Android Dev Summit 2019 and very first ever Ask Android live stream. I'm Lila Fujiwara and I'm an Android developer advocate. And I'm Dan Galpin, also an Android developer advocate, and I'm Lila's manager. <laughs> Which means I'm ultimately responsible for everything that I say and everything that she says. Yep. <laughs> All right, so let's get to it. Uh, also a bit long, the uh, hashtag AskAndroid team will be answering your questions on form factors, Jetpack Compose, Kotlin, coroutines, CameraX, community, architecture components, Android 10, and so much more. How about tools? <laughs> yeah, Android Studio. And I mean, tools, yeah. which is happening <laughs> <Yeah>. right now. <laughs> All right, so if you already have a burning question or you're excited about something you saw in the keynote, well, there's no need to wait. Tweet at hashtag AskAndroid for a chance to see your questions answered live during the Android Developer Summit. And you can also put your questions on the live stream, so yes. either way. OK, so finally, a big shout out to everybody that's participating on the live stream from around the world. I have a few countries here. Uh, Bangladesh, uh, welcome. Kenya, Congo, Brazil, Indonesia, Germany, Netherlands, Pakistan, India, Nepal, Mexico, and the faraway land of Palo Alto. <laughs> we have a jam-packed show for you today, so let's get rolling. All right, so first up, uh, I think we already got a sneak peek, but we're chatting with Chet and Tor. No, in that order. Chet, yeah. Tor. Yes. <laughs> Chet and Tor. So Tor is the tech lead for Android Studio, and he's our demo master, while Chet leads scalable outreach for Android after a long stint leading the toolkit team and is an expert in graphics, UI, performance, and donuts. Uh, you can catch donuts. both of them regularly on the Android Developers Backstage podcast, which means they both love to talk. So let's, you know, welcome Chet and Tor. Okay, so go ahead and start asking your questions. Uh, we got one right off the bat. So keynote just happened. What was uh, the favorite thing that you saw from the keynote? I like seeing more about Compose on the screen, seeing mm -hmm. a little bit more code and mm -hmm. how stuff is put together. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> well, I, I figured you were going to hour long. I was composed. You're going to add the other part of it, which is, yeah, 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 but what about? Well, clearly Android Studio 4.0. Okay. Right. Oh, so okay. Uh, you're going to talk about the tools for Compose. You're well, like, what is Compose? Android 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 right? It is yeah. one of the many features in Studio 4.0. Yeah. So we actually bumped major versions right, from mm -hmm. 3.6 to 4.0, and it's because we have a lot of awesome features. Mm -hmm. uh, Compose is one of them, but there's many other things as well. All right, so both of those things, if you want to check them out, you have to download Android Studio 4.0. That's right. All right. Yeah. And people can play with the motion editor, is that true? <laughs> yes, I think the motion editor is enabled in Canary One. Wow, exciting. All right, so um, we have a question from uh, Andref Sousa, which is you know, pronounced something like that. Is there a way to change the default Android emulator phone number and country code? No. Uh, <laughs> that's, well, that's a good question. I like right. that. I asked the team. Uh, there uh, isn't. Uh, and their question was, like, why, why do you want that? So you know, if it's a so really, we tweet back at him, they, why do you want that? They, they, they know go. this is not like a, a back and forth conversation, yeah. right? <laughs> well, it's more you know, if we add a setting for every possible one user request, it will be kind of a mess of a UI. So mm -hmm. we try to make sure that there's a really good use case for it. So if someone would make that case, mm -hmm. then we would consider it. So Hatorix uh, asks, uh, when are you planning to have a stable version of ViewPager two? Good time to ask that question. So it has been, uh, it was alpha for quite a long time. It's been in several beta releases, and the hope is that it goes RC real soon now, uh, which means <laughs> exactly that, real soon now. Um, and then it, at RC, the expectation for RC in general is that is basically the stable build, but we want one last sanity check, so I would expect stable to, to fast follow sometime after that. All right, sweet. OK, so we've got some questions that are coming in from the live stream. Um, and um, any app security measurement tool coming in Android Studio? Um, generally, we don't talk about future plans that we haven't announced. Oh, OK, there we go. So, <laughs> so maybe, maybe not. Um, that was from Amar D. I have no announcement at this time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very secure way of putting that. I like that. The, the <laughs> advice that I tend to give in the fireside chat, which we're going to have another one of this afternoon, uh -huh. is if your question has words in it like, will you, or is the team going to, or will there be a feature? Like, it's or not when. Something, you're not going to get joy right. out of the answer to that mm -hmm. question. OK, so with that in mind, uh, Jonathan uh, CPS asks, um, are you guys working on a tool to show a preview screen for Jetpack Compose? Yeah. Yes. So I guess that question was submitted before the keynote because we just gave a demo of yeah. it. And so yes, we uh, preview is one of the core features of our Compose tooling in Android Studio 4.0. All right, cool. OK, so here, here, here's a question. What is your favorite feature in Android Studio 4.0? Can I reinterpret that to what are your top five features in Portland? Yeah, absolutely, please. Because it's very difficult you, to choose can, one. Plus, I'll probably make some enemies on the team. I would just say, well, plus, plus, this, this way, this way you can actually pitch multiple features to our audience. This is great. Um, exactly. So my, you know, uh, in my top five, 
The first one I would say is the Build Profiler, which we didn't show in the keynote. So oh, there's going to be a demo later today. Nice. But it's basically going to let you see, uh, build profile your build mm -hmm. to find out what your mistakes, potential mistakes are, and how to optimize mm -hmm. it to, to run faster. So yeah. I assume, just, just to get a little more information, I assume that builds on what we've been seeing for a yeah. while, which is as it's doing builds, it's actually telling you how long it took to do each of those steps, right? So you're just well, getting this in a more visual way. Yeah, but it's way. not just yeah. about showing yeah, how exactly. long each task took. We are looking, uh, for example, we've instrumented more stuff into the build system, mm -hmm. and we're looking for potential mistakes. So we can tell you, for example, hey, this task mm -hmm. is you know, not, um, is always running. It's not looking at its inputs. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that means that it won't, mm -hmm. it'll always run even incrementally. Yeah. So, so we're basically pinpointing well. a lot yeah. of analysis saying, here's a problem, here's a problem, mm -hmm. here's oh, how great. to fix it. So build attribution is one. Motion editor is another one. Yeah. You saw that in the keynote. It's a pretty great feature that people have been waiting for. Compose tooling, of course, is there. Uh, my uh, second most favorite, I would say, is <laughs> having the embedded terminal, uh, the, the embedded emulator. So uh, we had a little bit of a slip up in the demo in the keynote, uh, but um, it it's a work. really great feature, <laughs> and it's just such more, so, so much more convenient mm -hmm. to be able to have the emulator participate in the window management of the IDE than having to sort of juggle top level windows. Yeah, I have an emulator that opens up on like a separate screen a yeah. lot of the time. So yeah, yeah and nice then layout right inspector, uh, which is a it has a lot of new features for. It's a bit like you know the Chrome DevTools, where mm -hmm. you can sort of track down why is this font size the way it is, mm -hmm. or you know what is the paint hierarchy looking like? Why do I, why do I have a clipping bug? Yeah, I like so, the 3D thing. We saw a little bit of that in the demo in the keynote, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's more as well. So we're going to do a 25-minute demo later today of a bunch more features in 4.0. Awesome. And while Excellent. we're still going, if you have questions about any of that, please post them to the live stream. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Norm from the <laughs> live stream asks, uh, is Kotlin good for enterprise? Of course. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I gave I gave a talk uh, about Kotlin, just Kotlin language in general, at a conference a few weeks ago, and it was a conference with mostly non-Android developers, mm -hmm. and the room was packed. I would say probably a quarter of the people in the room were doing Android development. The rest of the people were using Kotlin on the back end, enterprise, web, whatever. Uh, and of course, I use Kotlin on the desktop, mm -hmm. right? So Kotlin is not just for Android. So Android Studio, we have a lot of, uh, basically almost all the new code we write is written in Kotlin as well, which runs you know on your desktop. Awesome. Yeah, and we actually have a Ask Android segment about Kotlin and coroutines that's coming up later. Uh, and the person who's basically helping organize Kotlin everywhere is going to be a part of that, so we can answer much more of those questions. Yeah, so um, we got another question with the live stream comes from Lulama. Um, has Android, Android Studio improved in terms of speed? I think clearly yes, right? So um, we spent the last year or nine months working on something called Project Marble. Uh, where we focus exclusively on performance and stability, right? So mm -hmm. there's many aspects to speed. I mean, if he or she means um, mm -hmm. build speed, okay, obviously we're working on a profiler. Mm -hmm. But we're, you know, the things we did in Project Marble was uh, reducing UI freezes, reducing memory usage, mm -hmm. uh, optimizing uh, the way we were handling a bunch of uh, calculations. Uh, overall, speed was a big, big concern for us. There was there was some specifics called out in the keynote as well. I think in Karen's section, um, talking about things like well, incremental annotation processing got faster. Was that part of Marvel? that's build speed? Yeah, yeah. It, it was. And I think another one that maybe not is maybe not so obvious is that Studio is happy if you give it more memory. Most users actually run with the default, which mm -hmm. is about mm -hmm. I can't remember 1.2 gigs of RAM. For large projects, that's just not enough. Yeah. And so we actually give you suggestions as part of Marble. Hey, you should resize your heap to something bigger based on your machine and your project size. Mm -hmm. And if you accept that suggestion, you'll actually find Studio running much better. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so uh, I was going to do this one. Oh, this one goes, goes right into that last thing he was saying. OK, though. cool. Uh, so from Twitter, uh, Prene asks, with more and more features getting added to Android Studio, is there anything done to reduce the IDE memory footprint? <laughs> uh, which, uh, with each new release, yeah. AS is hogging more and more memory. Requesting. Yeah. Requesting. requesting. Yeah. Kind of requesting more and more memory. Right. Um, yeah, so I just answered that. Uh, we were. <laughs> wait, wait. So, uh, that's what I thought. Yeah, so, all right, yeah. cool. Uh, uh, all right, all right, so. Down, yeah, down, I, I down like to our last one. questions. Yeah, so. Um, this one in uh, this one here. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So Adrian asked in single or multiple activity implementation, which one is better? Uh, so <laughs> uh, <laughs> tricky question to answer. We are recommending that people move to single activity. So originally, Android was all about multiple activities. You go from place to place in your application flow, and new windows pop up. Uh, it is 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's better user experience if you can stay within one activity. If you have deep links, maybe that's a multiple activity uh, navigation situation. Okay, All right. cool. So I think that we are about to wrap up, uh, but just with Ted, Chet and Tor, so thank you so much for joining us. Thank Any you. last things to say to the live stream? Uh, Hi, try Studio Studio 4.0. <laughs> okay, try yeah. Studio 4.0. Check you out the Android here. Developers Backstage podcast yes. and submit your questions yes. to hashtag AskAndroid.